All right, Mr. Chair, it looks like we are all ready to start at the top of the hour. Excellent, thank you. I'll wait till three o'clock rolls around and we'll get started. <clears throat> It's now three o'clock. Welcome to the June 24th, 2020 meeting of the Urban Design Commission. This is the City of Oklahoma City's second recorded video conference Urban Design Commission meeting. My name is Lee Peoples. I'm the chair of the commission. As you're aware, during the state of emergency during the COVID-19 pandemic, no fiscal location will be provided for the Urban Design Commission meeting. The meeting will instead be live streamed from remote locations. We want to remind everyone that as you have arrived in a virtual meeting, we have muted your mic except for the commission members. As instructed in the agenda, those who called or emailed us in advance to let us know your name, contact number, and agenda item you wish to speak about will be recognized first. Before the Urban Design Commission votes on each item, I will ask if any members of the public wish to speak. Anyone speaking will be given three minutes to speak. Since you are muted, when I call on you, please unmute yourself. On a phone, you will press star six and then state your name and address for the record before you speak. On a desktop or laptop, you will hover your cursor over the microphone icon to remove the diagonal red line. If we lose our connection for this meeting, the meeting shall be stopped and reconvened once the connection is restored. If communications are unable to be restored within 30 minutes, items remaining for consideration will be continued to the next regularly scheduled Urban Design Commission meeting on Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020 at 3 p.m. by video conference. The meeting agenda and all the attached documents are located on okc.gov. Jennifer, will you please call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Peoples. Present. Commissioner Uday. Commissioner Blatt. Present. Commissioner Charneko. Commissioner Guillory. Here. Commissioner Holmes. Commissioner Miller? Here. Commissioner Nguyen? Here. Commissioner Varnum? Here. Did Commissioner Miller say yes. an, any affirmation? Yes? Yes. 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 I was just a little bit lost at first trying to figure out how this fit in. And... Uh, Mr. Chair, you have quorum. Thank you. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from May 27, 2020 meeting. Those were in your packets. Uh, were there any corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion for approval? I motion. We have a motion by Nguyen. Do we have a second? I mean, Blatt, I'll motion, I'll second that motion. We have a second by Blatt. I'm now seeing uh, the PrimeGov screen appearing and as soon as we're able, we'll be able to cast our votes on PrimeGov here. Give me one second, Mr. Chair. I'm having some technical difficulties. Sure. My apologies, guys. It doesn't appear that I'm able to uh, make the motions appear. So I would like to do a roll call vote for this action item. Is there any objection? No, please go ahead. Commissioner Peoples. Aye. 
Uh, Commissioner Blatt. Commissioner Blatt, how would you like to vote on the motion for the minutes? Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Guillory? Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Miller? Yeah. Aye. Commissioner Nguyen? Aye. Commissioner Varnum? Aye. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This motion passes. Thank you. Uh, moving on down the agenda, we have no cases withdrawn, we have no continuance requests, and we have nothing on the consent docket. So we will move on to cases for individual consideration. First one is item 6A, UDCA 20-13, 608 East Eubanks, and I'll ask staff to give us an overview of this item. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Katie Frittle. I'm the principal planner for current planning and urban design. Uh, Michael Philbrick is taking some well-deserved vacation this week, so I'm going to step into his place for the afternoon. Um, this is an application that the commission has seen previously. Um, all other items have been approved at this point, and the last remaining item is to paint the unpainted brick at this structure. Uh, the applicant responded to the commission's request for some additional information about the condition of the brick, as well as the method and materials to be used to paint the brick. And I believe we do have the applicant um, in the meeting at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, and Katie, can you confirm, I guess the only item remaining you mentioned was the painting of the brick and we now have um, a good number of pictures in here that we requested during the last meeting showing the mortar, the condition of some of it that has been um, replaced and, and, and everything. Um, and then we have, of course, an updated staff report uh, which would explain uh, the staff's position. Do, does anyone have any questions for staff on this item? Not hearing any questions for staff. Um, is the applicant present uh, in the uh, Zoom meeting? And if so, um, would you- if, Scott Baber, I'm here. Okay, uh, give us your name and address, please. Scott Baber, 4205 Crystal Springs Road and more. Okay, uh, do you have any um, comments you'd like to make on this? Well, I saw that um, the UD recommended denying the application and I just wanted to point out that um, uh, the, the Romabio uh, representative said that, um, that the product that we're using allows the brick to breathe and is designed for painting brick. And so, um, you know, the, the argument that, that we're damaging the brick or somehow not letting it breathe is just, um, you know, this product uh, is designed for that. And there's a, there's a uh, flyer on the last page, I think it's the last page, second last page of the, the document that was, um, that was, uh, distributed and also Chris Simmons from uh, Spectrum Paint uh, provided an email. Uh, if you recall, um, Mr. Uday suggested that we call somebody from HIS Paint. Uh, we called him and he suggested a latex paint, uh, said that they do that all the time. But then um, our research showed that um, the, the paint will actually breathe if you use this Romabio paint that uh, that Mr. Simmons and, uh, and Spectrum Paint um, have suggested. Um, so, you know, I think that the in the in the, the guidance document that was suggested or that was um, uh, mentioned, all of those those photographs are from inner city um, larger buildings that are you know, that it, that it says, it suggests that unpainted bricks should not be painted. Well, that's, that is a suggestion. It's not, it doesn't say shall not be painted, um, you know, and that's, that's in the guidance in there. So I, you know, in my mind, it, they're talking about inner city, larger buildings, and it suggests that they shouldn't be painted. So I don't know. And in, in, in our opinion, this is, um, this is zone C3, 
and it's it's closer to you know it's going to be an office space so it's it's closer to being a a house than it is to being one of these commercial buildings that are pictured in your guidance and so we just think that it would um uh you know the the look of it the repairs that have been made you know we're, we're going to continue to do repairs i think um one of the commissioners talked about the repairs last week that um uh how many repairs are we going to be doing we're we're just going to do what needs to be done um, but even when you do the repairs, you still get that stair step looking different color grout and the paint, if we were able to paint it, that would um, uh, cover up where those repairs have been. We're not trying to cover up any, anything that's, you know, that's not repaired. We're going to repair it first, but then we would like to paint it. So that's kind of where we are. All right. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any questions for the applicant at this point? This is Tony Blatt. I, I've got a question in regards to some of the photographs that were sent, specifically the ones that show what appears to be recent grout um, repair work. Um, yeah. Trying to, to identify maybe a photograph. It's towards the end of the packet. Right. Um, my question is, is, is this is all of the repair work that we're seeing with the tinted mortar new repair work or is that repair we, work that it's repair work that was done before we purchased it we purchased it in march of this year and that was all done we haven't done any any repair work to the brick yet the reason why i ask is it appears that the repair work the pointing work was done but it was not cleaned properly the brick, the, yeah, the brick is covered in mortar smear. Uh, some of the some of the work is is, is uh, it just doesn't seem like to me that the, the that it's a finished product yet, and that the final work should be neat and clean, independent on whether or not the commission recommends paint or not paint. I personally am not a fan of paint on existing brick. I think it's a it's a once you do it, you never can go back from it. I, I personally prefer unpainted brick on structures. But my my main question was in regards to the brick repointing that was done. If it was new, I was going to recommend it needs to be clean to where there is no mortar cover out on the face of the brick. Right. You're if you curious if that was yours or if that was another. Right. Yeah, that was done previous to us owning it. But if you look at the the picture of the very front of the house, yes, um, that that uh, pointing was looks like it was done correctly without any smearing. That's what that's what we're saying is you know if we painted it, you couldn't tell that that repair was done. You see that picture that I'm talking about? My way towards that the stair way. stepped the lighter sure. grout. Sure. They used they used a, a grout that was. It didn't match the grout. Right. They used the grout that was probably yeah. a different a different matrix than what is in the building. So, so there's, you know, there's a fair amount of repointing work on that facade that still needs to be done to finish up. Um, the the arch has got some failure. Correct. There's some. There's obviously some some bedding joints that are that are open and some head joints that are open. That's right, and that's um, and we do plan on doing that work. Okay. That that was my. And then with respect to the paint that is on, it appears to be on a pretty limited amount of, of masonry. I, am I correct that it's on some cast stone pieces uh, and a pretty limited portion of the masonry itself? Doesn't seem to be a lot on brick, it seems to be more on the cast stone pieces. Limited, I don't, I don't understand the question. I see some red and some gray oh, oh. paint which appears yeah. to be on uh, cast stone sills. Like cornerstones and uh, the keystone and, and like on the patio, um, I think where, where you're seeing those colors, like maybe even window sills. Window sills. It's not yeah. so much on the brick because the brick has got, um, it's not a wire cut face and it's not a velour face. It's got a pretty rough texture. It, it is a wire cut, but that it's got a really rough textured face and paint into that is going to be almost impossible to get out once it's there. But the paint that's 
on the cast pieces is a little bit more manageable. Yeah, this is this is more of a whitewash. I mean, it is a paint, but they but they if you see videos of them putting it on, it looks like a whitewash. Also, my wife is here, too. So uh, I think she'd like to say anything, say some something, if that's okay, uh, Mr. People. Yes, go ahead and give us your name and address, please. Sheila Baber, 4205 Crystal Springs Road in Moore. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So we bought this property to improve it and the uh, existing condition, even if we do all the repairs correctly, uh, it's, you have unmatched brick. If you look at that photo underneath the windows where we have a lighter color brick and then a darker color brick and um, the uh, paint that we have recommended is a very expensive paint and it's going to increase the value of this property has a 20 year warranty on it if i remember correctly much better than a, a latex paint it will not harm this brick and uh, i think that if we were to leave this structure this way even after repairs it's just not going to be as valuable and it's not going to look as good in the Lincoln corridor. All right, thank you. Are there any members of the public um, who've joined the meeting that would like to speak to this item? All right, uh, not hearing any. Uh, commissioners, are there any other comments or discussion on this item? not hearing any comments or discussion or do anyone like to make a motion? Let me ask a question for staff on this. I know that the Lincoln uh, area is fairly new for this commission. Um, I don't recall that we've had a proposal to paint brick yet in the Lincoln area. And I know that Katie, you're fairly new, but does anyone else, any commissioners recall us uh, hearing a case with this request in the Lincoln uh, overlay? This is Katie, and I'm not aware of a previous proposal in this overlay to, to paint a structure, but as you said, I've only been in this position uh, working with this commission for a couple of months, so uh, I would have to defer to Michael or do some research um, to verify that. Right. I was just curious because it, it is a guideline, and I was just curious if, if uh, we had other, other um uh, instances and I don't recall them um, and we've only the, this overlay has only existed for a year or two so we haven't had a lot of cases. Um, I'd also mention to the commissioners that um, this uh, portion of the um, overlay that's applicable here is a guideline um, and it's yes clearly states in the staff report that masonry that's not painted should not be painted. Um, so it's a guideline for us to consider. Any other commissioners have any uh, questions for staff, the applicant, or any comments on this? This for, this is Commissioner Black, could, just yep. for the, um, for us to have this in precedent, could, this, could staff give us the definition of how we're rea to react to a guideline? Uh, I might defer to legal on the particulars of that. Susan, can you speak to that? This is Susan. Um, well, it's a guideline that, you know, it's not mandatory. So you can look at that and determine whether or not you think it would be appropriate in this case. 
and okay. that's basically yes this is katie my my understanding is always if if it's a regulation and it's a shall then it's something where if you're going against that that regulation then they would need to get a variance from the board of adjustment when it's a guideline it's more it's guidance for your decision making process but you may identify reasons that that guideline is not applicable in that case or um, that some alternative proposal is appropriate. Uh, while uh, Katie was speaking, I noticed that Commissioner Uday uh, joined the call. Um, are you able to, to hear us, Commissioner Uday? Yes, I just logged in on my laptop. So. Okay, well, just to bring you up to speed here, um, we're considering item 6A, uh, the uh, home that will be a business in the Lincoln corridor. And uh, the staff has presented their report. Uh, we've had a question or two back and forth, but there have not been any motions um, to approve or deny. And uh, just have it open right now for uh, comments or questions from commission members. I have a question. Um, Instead of painting, um, is it in, anywhere in the guidelines that uh, stain or restaining um, is that is that uh, part of the guidelines too, or, or is it not? And then number two is um, is there an applicant? Do they have a secondary plan if it was to be denied? This is Katie. Uh, there's nothing in the building conservation and rehabilitation guidelines that addresses um, other treatments. It specifically references painting masonry, uh, but it doesn't talk about other things like, um, uh, you know, other kinds of treatments to to brick. Um, I think we would have to just consider the aesthetic impact of that and the physical effect on the material, similarly to the way it talks about the effects of paint. They, they, this is Scott Baber. Um, they actually call this a mineral, um, a mineral paint. So it's a, it's kind of a cross between a, a paint and a, and a, uh, a stain. Like I said before, it's, it's almost like a whitewash. If you watch the video of, from Ramabio of how they put it on, it's, um, it goes on like a whitewash, but, um, it, they do call it a, uh, a mineral masonry paint is what it's what it's called. Um, yeah, mineral, breathable, durable, twenty-year warranty. I'm looking at the flyer there. Package. And then to um, follow up with the second part of Commissioner Nguyen's question, uh, if this were to be denied, do you have a backup plan, maybe to clean up the tuck pointing or do anything else? No, no, we really don't have a um, any kind of backup plan. You know, we are going to do the the pointing and and the fixing of the grout and all that. But um, it, uh, you know, the the plan all along is to to, to paint and it's going to be yeah. So there's no no backup plan. The value of the property would be negatively impacted if we do not spend this significant amount of money to improve the aesthetics in our opinion, and our uh, contractor recommended it for value, from a value perspective and an aesthetic perspective. Well, are there uh, any other any other discussion among commissioners or any motions on this item? I had shared uh, some contact information with Michael to get to the applicants. Were, were you guys all able to make contact and get a uh, professional recommendation uh, yes. from paint manufacturers as far as uh, local paint manufacturers? Yes, first, first we contacted uh, the HIS contact that you suggested. Um, he sent me over pictures, um, but he was going to do a, a latex paint that blocks the, uh, does not allow the, the brick to, 
to, to breathe. And so then we contacted Chris Simmons, who is a local uh, spectrum paint guy. He's the Ramabio um, uh, rep. And he, that's, that's the one that said that, you know, this paint is a uh, mineral uh, paint that's uh, designed for the brick. But the only reason we contacted him is because uh, we were contacted by um, Mr. Philbrick, I guess, about uh, the HIS expert providing uh, elaborative. All he said was we do it all the time and it works just fine. There's no problem. And so we went back to him per um, the per the request of, as I it recall, was, it was Michael it, Philbrick. Katie Frittle, and, but yeah, oh, it was Katie Frittle. It was. And so we went back to H, the HIS expert and asked for him to reply in an email about uh, it not harming the brick and, uh, you know, beyond, they do it all the time. And he was non-responsive for whatever reason, we don't know. And so that is the reason that we went to Spectrum Paint and because we'd already identified this Roma Bio uh, mineral wash that's very expensive. Yeah, he, he may have been on vacation or something. He just didn't respond. So, but he did respond initially and sent us pictures and we sent those in to Mr. Philbrick. And then I think it was Katie responded back um, and said, is this all, this all you got? <laughs> and so that's when we said, um, well, we went to HIS specifically because that's what Mr. Uday recommended. And then I asked her if it would be appropriate to go to another supplier. And she said, yes, or she, she's on the phone. She can, she can come. Now the, the contact that you have at Spectrum that recommended the, the paint that you all have now, uh, did he provide uh, some uh, written documentation as far as addressing the concerns that we have about painting brick? Yes, there's an email attached to your packet. It's the very last page on the packet that I got anyway. Uh, says, should I read it or? Do, no. No. It's, it's an email from him um, that just says it's specifically designed, um, dries down to a breathable finish, allowing moisture to wick through, not, uh, does not damage original substrate. This paint's a lot more expensive than a latex paint. It's mined overseas and imported. I'd like to ask staff a question just to uh, refresh myself. Um, if we do not take action on an item because of lack of emotion, am I correct that it's the same as denying the item? Uh, no, I don't think it would be any action if you don't make some kind of a motion either one way or the other. It would, I guess, automatically continue to the next meeting, but. That's correct. Not, yeah, I I'm remember. I'm not sure yeah. what, That's yeah, yeah. what okay. that would do, but yeah, you probably need to make an action one way or the other. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll this is uh, Tony Blaine. I'll clarify my comments earlier since I had mentioned the fact that I am not in favor of painting masonry structures. It's not so much that the material that's being recommended is uh, anything less than what it is. I mean, I, whenever I reviewed the material and read the data on it, it seems like it's an excellent material. The ordinance does not reference specific materials and therefore it's about precedent and future individuals coming in who would want to paint a surface that would not be using a material that is suitable for brick, but referencing this as precedent for the reason why they should be able to. Um, I'm not saying that the material uh, would not perform as it's, as it's advertised to do so. Uh, and for painting a brick surface, uh, a previously painted brick surface or something that's not within one of the overlays, it would probably be completely appropriate. I appreciate the fact that the owners have gone to great lengths to identify materials that will exceed uh, industry standards or status quo. Um, from my opinion, it's, 
It's more of a matter of not setting precedent in an area where uh, an individual might follow suit and think that they have the right to paint a surface that we would believe is not being uh, considered with the same level of detail. So that's the reason why I had mentioned uh, that I'm not in favor of painting a previously unpainted brick surface. That's just from my standpoint. And let me uh, follow up with that. And in, in the last few years, I we do this does come up from time to time in different overlays, uh, different design districts, and um, very frequently we deny uh, for the reasons that Commissioner Blatt has mentioned. Um, the only one in my time that I can remember us approving was a house building, I believe it was a building, office building in the 23rd Street area that had already been painted um, illegally, uh, not not coming before us, uh, you know, to get approval, if I'm remembering this correctly, and it had multiple different colors of paint on it, um, but that was pretty rare in my memory of, of these type of cases. I just wanted to offer that uh, in case others had forgotten those cases. Any additional discussion or a motion from the commission on this item? Can we can we speak? This is Scott and Sheila again. Uh, yes, please, but um, please keep it brief. We've got several other uh, items on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Um, I've officed on Lincoln Boulevard for since 1987. I'm not familiar with one other structure in this overlay like this structure. So I would not be concerned with setting a precedent. There are many brick structures near the overlay that have been painted many different colors. And so in this case, if we do not, uh, number one, I don't think there's any uh, other structure in there that this would affect at all because as a precedent setting situation. And if we do not, do this, I believe it's going to devalue this property by tens of thousands of dollars. And uh, I also believe it is just not going to be a, uh, a nice quality structure for the Lincoln Boulevard UD overlay. And uh, let me just add something for the applicant's information. The overlay is fairly new. So uh, within the last two or three years, if I remember correctly. So it, it wouldn't surprise me if there were other buildings within that have painted brick, but have been here for since the 60s, 70s, you know, going back historically before this overlay existed. Um, I'll now, now ask uh, commissioners, any other comments or motions on this item? This is Commissioner Blatt, I'll, I'll make a motion to deny the application on the basis that the project does not meet the regulations or guidelines of the Urban Design and Overlay District Zoning Ordinances as referenced in Section D of the staff report. We have a motion and uh, looks like it's already come up in PrimeGov, uh, motion by Blatt, and now do we have a second? Second by Commissioner Varnum. And now you should be able to cast your votes. Looks like there's a few commissioners who have yet to vote. For some reason, I don't have a voting. I don't either. Uh, maybe we need to do a roll call on this staff. Oh. oh, there it is. Oh, you have to do the exit and then come back into. I I see the motion in the second, but I don't see anything allowing me to vote. You have to come out of that screen. We're we're not looking at that screen. You have to come out of Zoom in order to be able to see it. Yeah. If you'll press escape so that Zoom is not your full screen, 
um, you'll, you should have a separate window for PrimeGov that will let you vote. It looks like we, uh, Commissioners Uday and Gilroy, have not cast their vote in PrimeGov. Uh, I cast mine. It, okay. Telling me I have, uh, but I'm not sure if it's not showing up on your end, but I actually see it. Okay. I don't. Staff, do you see all the votes? There it is looks a, like Mr. Uday, you were saying? There is a, an area that says status and mine says waiting for some reason. I don't know if that's a, supposed to be the case. Uh, okay, well, um, what I can do is, which way would you like to vote on this item, Commissioner no, Uday? I'm voting nay. Nay? Yes. Thank you. Have all the commissioners placed their votes otherwise in PrimeGov? Is mine, uh, is mine showing up? It is, sir. Okay. If there are no other it, changes in PrimeGov? Say it again, sir. I'm sorry. I, it, it's just saying waiting on my side. Okay. So I didn't know if it was going through or not. I'm going to press the close vote button now that it appears that everybody has had a chance to vote, and that should change your screen, okay? All right. This motion passed by a four to three vote. So uh, our action today is to deny this. Uh, now I know applicants, this is not the outcome that you wanted. Um, you can certainly, and I, please talk with staff about your options because there, there is an option to appeal this decision. Um, but that would end our action on this item and we'll move on to item 6B. Item 6B is UDCA 20-19, uh, 624 Northwest 7th Street. Uh, staff, could you uh, introduce this item, please? This is an application to construct a single family residence on a vacant lot in the Cottage District. Uh, the committee commission has actually approved construction of single family residence here, I believe, two times previously, but those um, proposals have not moved forward just for your, in case this site looks familiar to you. Uh, you have actually seen it before. Um, there uh, were, uh, other than the use of a fiber cement siding product, which is called out in the guidelines under building materials is something that has to be approved by the commission. Uh, there were no other concerns from staff as far as meeting the relevant uh, guidelines and regulations. Thank you. Uh, does any commissioner have a question for staff? I believe the applicant uh, is with us. Um, if you'd like to speak, uh, give us your name and address and, and uh, you, can, you may address the commission. Hi, my name is uh, Clay Condry and my current address is 3008 Rain Tree Road, um, Oklahoma City 73120. And I don't have any questions for you. I guess I would ask if you guys have any questions uh, for me. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, uh, any questions for the applicant? I had a question for staff and I guess I could look here. Um, do you happen to know is if this product fiber cement panels has been used elsewhere in the cottage district? I don't see that it was mentioned in the staff report as being used elsewhere. Katie, are you with us? Can you hear me? Yes, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I cannot speak to whether it's been approved in the cottage district specifically, although I would imagine it has. I know we've approved this product um, in numerous design districts across the city um, for similar types of applications. I believe there is um, a house on in the same block 
further to the east that has a hardy panel. I don't know if it's exactly the same, but um, it's the house on the southeast corner. Um, there's another one going in on the further to the east of that, but it, it when we approved it, it was the only house uh, on that corner. Any uh, questions or comments from the commission? Are there any members of the public that are with us that would like to speak to this item? If so, please give us your name and address. Not hearing anything. Uh, any other discussion among the commissioners or anyone want to uh, put forward a motion? I'll make, a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the application on the basis that the project meets the regulations and guidelines of the downtown design overlay zone, district zoning ordinance as referenced in section C and D of the staff report. Thank you, Commissioner Uday. You should have the uh, PrimeGov screen uh, allowing you to click and, and make that motion. There we go. We have a motion by Uday, a second by Nguyen. When you're able here, uh, cast your votes, please. Okay, this has passed unanimously. So you are approved and uh, congratulations and have a good day. Thank you, Lee, appreciate it. You bet. All right, uh, final item on items for individual consideration is item 6C, UDCA-20-20. And uh, this was a um, continued from a previous meeting and I'll let staff go ahead and introduce us and bring us up to speed on the changes. So the commission has previously approved the demolition of the existing structure at this site, uh, formerly Mutt's Hot Dog. Uh, the commission has also previously re reviewed um, proposed new construction at the property and uh, denied that proposal with concerns about meeting setback requirements and the building fronting onto Northwest 23rd Street. The applicant has submitted a revised proposal uh, reconfiguring the building on the site and redesigning so that it better addresses um, Northwest 23rd Street as well as Douglas on the east side um, and uh, meeting those uh, or addressing those concerns about the setback that were raised previously. So uh, staff has recommended approval of the application based on those changes that have been made. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant present? And if so, if you'd like to speak, give us your name and address. Uh, not hearing anyone. Uh, any members of the commission have questions for staff or other comments about this item? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Please give us your name and address. I'm sorry. Uh, Robert Haggard, 1400 Northwest 23rd. And you're the applicant, sir? I am the applicant for the owner. Okay. Uh, would you like to make any comments? No, I just uh, am ready if there are any questions. Okay, great. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions for the applicant? This is Commissioner Wynn. Um, are there any like since the last time we had this at our meeting, has there any been updates to the plans or with the setbacks um, that has been readjusted? Yes, there was an entire, you might as well take the original and trash it. We completely redesigned, reconfigured uh, with, with the great help of Michael Philbrick and did everything that, that he expressed the committee wished that we would do. We reconfigured everything, redrew the plans and resubmitted. This is Commissioner Blatt. I, I first want to say I really appreciate the fact that you did uh, a really great job in listening to the intent of the commission and trying to incorporate all of the uh, comments. I think that you succeeded in in getting something that has a better pedestrian link to the street 
I do have a, a question uh, regarding the northeast corner of the property and specifically with respect to sight line for turning uh, east or turning south onto Douglas. Uh, proximity to the curb and, and is there any issue with respect to or and, and this may be an issue for permitting once it uh, moves forward. Is there any issue with respect well, to the corner and the site triangle? Well, um, this is how I understand it. Since the traffic is going from north to south, there isn't a site triangle at that point. I'm thinking, you see more, what, you see what I'm, thinking, I mean? I'm thinking more west to east. So the traffic west. that's traveling west on 23rd Street is going to turn to the south on Douglas. Is there any but issue? They, they wouldn't have a, a, a site triangle. Uh, the site triangle I understand is when you pull up to the stop, what, stop sign, then you have to have a 20 by 20 or uh Site triangle in order to see if traffic is coming. But in this case, the, the, the traffic is going from west to east and they will be turning and going south on Douglas, so there isn't a site triangle. I, I just noticed that you referenced that on, on 23rd Street. And it's not referenced specifically on the corner uh, coming on to 23rd Street. So again, I think that if this was anything there were a comment would come in, am I correct from a staff standpoint that it will come up during plan review of the, during the permitting process? Yes. yes. This is Katie, yes, that's accurate. Okay, all right, very good. Um, no, and I'd also appreciate the fact that you, uh, even though the back of the building is, is not the primary elevation, I appreciate the fact that some time and effort and, and uh, some funds were spent in making that a more primary, I can I can see that it is not it has not been made a uh, a truly secondary elevation. It, it seems like there was some time spent on making it have a little bit of street presence. So I think you did a good job on this. Thank you. Yes, I, I would join those comments. I know uh, that the applicant. I'm sure you were frustrated last time, and uh, it. It's not very often that people um, do what you did and sit down with staff and completely go through and, and re rearrange things um, when at first you, you weren't really pleased or willing to do that. So uh, uh, that's, that's an important consideration. Well, I will say this, uh, just in case, um, I always have to do what my client wants and I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. But I, I, I will admit this, I did not honestly pay attention to the intent. And after I started redesigning it and spending some, some time at the site, I began to realize what Michael was trying to explain, that the building, the building was turning its back on, on 23rd and Douglas. And I see now, you know, now you can walk down that street and go right over that little sidewalk and go into the restaurant or go up to the others. And so it was a learning uh, process on my part, too. And I appreciate you, uh, Michael Gilbert. <laughs> are there any members of the public uh, that are with us that would like to speak to this item? If so, please give us your name and address. I'm not hearing any uh, commissioners, any other comments or potential motions? Yeah, I have one, one additional um, question. So I'm looking at the site plan and then there's like a one, a one way direction arrow from, I guess it was at Douglas going into the building, but then it goes in, is that a concern for you guys or is that something that's been really considered thoroughly? Um, my concern is like some people that's parking in that parking lot would go the other way as well um, into. In, there to, will be uh, there will be one way signs as well as do not enter. Okay. Plus the arrow painted on the on the on the drive. Okay. And the parking uh, at Michael's guidance was angled. 
So that the only way you can really park in them is to is to go that yeah. direction. Go that direction. Gotcha. But there will be uh, do not enter signs. Okay. All right. Any any other questions uh, from the commission? I'd like to, this is Commissioner Bly. I'd like to make a motion to approve the application based on the, the on the basis that the project meets the regulations and guidelines of the Urban Design Overlay District Zoning Ordinance as referenced in Section C and D of the staff report. Okay, we have a motion by Blatt. We have a second by Miller. The voting is open. Please cast your votes. Looks like everyone has voted except for Commissioner Uday, at least on my screen. Yeah, it doesn't. Every every category says waiting. Move. Okay. It just shows we're waiting for a motion on mine. Um, staff, could you ask Commissioner Uday for his vote and cast it? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Uday, how would you like to vote on this item? Uh, I'm voting a I for the most for the motion. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, everyone has voted and it has uh, passed unanimously, seven votes in favor. So you are approved. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. That will conclude our cases for individual consideration. Uh, we have no other business. There are three items uh, listed under the communications for administrative approval. Uh, would anybody like staff to discuss any of those? Uh, not hearing anything, we'll move on to comments from staff. Are there any comments from planning staff? Uh, no comments at this time. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the commissioners? Do we have items on the agenda for next month's meeting? Uh, this is Katie. Yes, I believe we do have items already um, for the next month's meeting and we will get that information out to you all shortly so that you can be sure to hold that on your calendars if necessary. Thank you. And Katie, am I correct that this is the last, this current meeting is the last one where we're going to get these in paper from now on they're going to come by email? That is correct. You will be receiving an email with a link to the packet online. Uh, and so all of the materials that you normally would get in a paper packet will just be available um, electronically. If anyone has concerns or questions about that, or if you get those links and for some reason you're not able to view your packet, uh, please let us know so that we can coordinate that and make sure you have what you need for the meeting. Okay. Thank you, Katie. All right. Uh, if there are no other comments from members, uh, our next meeting date, uh, which we will meet on Wednesday, July 22nd. Uh, 2020 new applications were to be submitted by four o'clock Tuesday, June 23rd and uh, revisions by June 30th. We have no other business, uh, so we will be adjourned. Thank you, everyone.